next session is on mega projects and master plans. Uh, what do we mean by mega projects and master plans? These are the projects that are um, basically strategic for an economy, not just individual hotel investments. Uh, this means there is a role for the government, there is a role for the investors, and there is a wider strategic initiative. It also means uh, there are issues of huge levels <coughs> of financing uh, and delivery capacity. So it, it brings in uh, a much wider range of issues than individual uh, hotel development. And so we have an excellent panel uh, with us, and we're going to go into some of the, the opportunities, the challenges, and the issues, and some of the projects uh, around mega projects and master plans. So I will just uh, introduce the panel. We have Abdella Al Abdouli, who is the managing director of the Al Marjan Island. Where you are, Abdella. So the Al Marjan Island uh, stand is outside. We have Khalid uh, Al uh, Yamadi, who's the chief executive officer of Muscat National Development and Investment Company, ASAS. And he's also the chairman of Salam, uh, 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 Salam Air. Welcome. Right. Uh, we have uh, Imad Barakat, who is the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the Moroccan Agency for Tourism Development. Welcome. Uh, and we have uh, Abdella Asani, uh, Asani, who is Chief Hospitality Officer at MAD International. Welcome. And finally, last but not least, uh, Zoltan Kali, who is the Head of Asset Management at Omran. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, your panel. Thank you. Okay, uh, Abdella, I'm going to start with Al. Uh, Marjan, so before I ask you the questions about the relationship between public and private sector, the government and investor, tell us a little bit about Al Marjan. Uh, Al Marjan Island is the iconic real estate development in the Emirate of Ras Al Khaima. It extends around 4.5 kilometers into the Arabian Gulf, covering an area of uh, 2.7 million square meters. Al Marjan Island will be the destination for hospitality and residential communities in the Emirate of Ras Al Khaimah. We are targeting 8,000 hotel keys to be in Al Marjan Island by 2025. 12,000 residential, uh, 12, residential units. 600 holiday homes and villas plus F and B destination. So uh, yesterday afternoon, I moderated a, a panel discussion on Ras Al Khaimah, and um, there's obviously a lot of assets and opportunities for tourism, things to do uh, for visitors. But um, Ras Al Khaimah is not far from Dubai, not far from Abu Dhabi, not far from Oman. So uh, a, 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 a lot of competition around. How do you and the government work together. Is there a strategic coordination? Where does Al Marjan Island fit into a kind of national plan? Of course, in, in terms of the national plans, we think Al Marjan Island plus the local government of Ras Al Khaimah plus the federal government of the whole UAE, they are playing a complementary role. So we don't compete honestly. We complement each other. We provide different offering that's available in any regional destinations, we are targeting to be a resort mm -hmm. destination. And this is where people would prefer to stay longer, for a longer time of period. A visitor can enjoy the nature of Ras Al Khaimah, the adventurous. And this is where the relationship between the master developer plus the government started. I mean, today it's about partnership. It's not just about developing. It's about creating the destination, creating an opportunity, creating an investment opportunity that will attract global leaders in the real estate and the residential market to, pro to work with us in the uh, real estate development. OK, well, I want to come on to issues of financing and things later on in this conversation. Khaled, if I can come to you. Um, so um, as chief, you, you, you've got two hats on, really. You've got um, the, the ASAS Chief Executive Officer of the Muscat National Development Investment Company, and then you're also Chairman of Salam Air. So in terms of this sense of coordination and collaboration between government and the private sector and the airline, you actually bridge that gap. What, what, tell us a little bit about what is ASAS? It's a, uh, and is it government? ASAS actually is a, a semi-government company owned by the Sovereign Fund of Oman, as well pension funds. 
Uh, it is considered the biggest uh, profit-oriented developer in the country. Uh, when we started, we have, of course, national agenda as well. We have to make money for our shareholders. So uh, we are a young company, two and a half years old only. Uh, we approached the tourism sector, uh, again, to be a catalyst in the national level uh, as a full tourism supply chain. So uh, we started looking to different locations. Of course, uh, uh, you know, Oman is not uh, one city or two cities and it got different uh, types of uh, nat natural uh, and seasonal attractions along the year. So uh, we are working in different uh, sites, but also we said in order to boost the tourism sector, we need to go to different parts of the tourism supply chain. When we uh, got the license for the first budget airline, which is Sanam Air, that was founded by uh, ASAS. Uh, so we went there just to complement the airline business with our destinations later and to design a proper uh, tourism packages for okay. our guests, basically. So you, you, I, I, I'm still a little bit unclear. The, you, you're a developer of uh, resorts and uh, right. assets. You have the Salam Air uh, airline. Right. Um, and uh, do you have any other government role? In, you're not involved in regulation or anything like no, that? Or? No, okay. we are just a profit-oriented company. Our uh, board of directors representing our shareholders. Uh, we in Oman have eight government pension funds, one plus one private sector pension fund. So, you have a, so you've so got government equity investors right. through the... Plus also Masqat municipality, which okay. is uh, they offer their lands in the beginning when they saw the good consortium of investors, they stepped in as equity investor. So what is it, uh, can I describe it as a PPP? Is it a public-private partnership? Or? Um, it's actually all are managed by, by government entities at the end because even the pension funds are uh, uh, managed by uh, government uh, in Oman as well most of the GCC. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but it's not, it doesn't report to Minister of Finance like Amran, for example. Yeah. It's on 100% directly by Minister of Finance, okay. uh, where Zultan is there. So I was going to ask about the relationship with Omran, because so right. Omran, I know, we, we all know it's an inv a, a private sector company, but sort of government as well? He, he likes to um, uh, work as a private sector company. Uh, we, 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 uh, we do our, uh, our business in, in the best possible way to emulate what the private sector does. Our, we try to take our investment decisions and development decisions in a similar way. Most of us working in the company come from the private sector, but as Khaled rightly put, we are government backed and we were established 10 years ago a little bit after the government started to have a very strategic approach to the tourism development of the country, and the Ministry of Tourism wanted to create a development arm uh, through the Ministry of Finance. So, so one, of, one of, the, the sort of the themes of this, this little session is about that relationship between the strategic government need of a, of a mega project or a master plan and then the, the profit motive of a private investor. So for, for Omran and I guess for ASAS as well, what, what, you can't have two masters? Is it the strategic national objective or is it the profit? Through our work, through our projects, we, we partner with private sector developers. A lot of our master developments are and will be done through collaboration with the private sector and that's where our role comes as an enabler. We, uh, we come with the planning side. With the, we're actually now graduating from becoming a single asset developers. We have 16 hotels which we've built in the last, some built, some, uh, some asset managed over the last 10 years, and now we're graduating to become a master developer and then involve private sector players to enable these projects. And we have two of these projects which are very relevant. One is the conversion of the um, old commercial port in the historic hub of, uh, of Muscat by the Corniche, by the old soup. Uh, which is a 100 hectare uh, mixed use development, a little bit like uh, the world has. Two kinds of uh, uh, master plans that we, are, uh, we create. Uh, we try to create by them an ecosystem, a productive ecosystem. We developed a, a cultural uh, and uh, a, cultu a, a cultural and leisure city inside, uh, inside Casablanca. I think we might have a problem with your microphone. Inside Casablanca, which uh, Casablanca is the big, uh, biggest city, we don't have 
no land to develop results. So we try to create, to transform an old port and to bring it to become a, a new destination, a new resort. So we create a cultural product with five sovereign funds, uh, which are four from GCC and Moroccan one. So this is the first master plan we create uh, uh, to bring Casablanca becoming an ecosystem, a productive ecosystem. Because when we're talking about productive ecosystem, we're talking about critical mass. It is very important. We cannot uh, manage a destination or sell a destination as 5,000 beds or 10,000 beds. You, you, you've mentioned predictive ecosystem. Yeah. So what, I don't know. I, I kind of can guess what that means. But what, this is a smart system. You, you, you're tracking behaviors and data. What, what does predictive mean? I mean productive ecosystem, it means a master plan where can, uh, when we co-share, co I mean uh, cultural, item, cultural uh, items that are not productive and hotels that are productive. Both of them bring us an IRR, a productive IRR for the state and for the private people who are there. The same thing we are doing, the same thing in beach resorts. We, we are creating beach resources uh, beach resources uh, outside the cities. It means that we are developing something emergent in emergent destination. So we need to give lots of incentive mm -hmm. to bring this ecosystem to be productive. Because if you let it like that as a greenfield uh, opportunity, you are not gonna uh, uh, success on that. I, so I imagine that for Morocco, I mean Morocco is a very mature tourism market right next to, you know, very close to Europe, um, and all of the things we've heard over the past two days about, you know, the next generation, people want personalized experience, they want sort of boutique, they want adventure. Morocco has been doing all of that for many years, so what is it you're looking for from investors? What, uh, you know, wh where, where does Morocco go next to stay ahead? So, so let's say for the eight destination I said in the beginning, we have one which is Mator, which is Marrakesh. We know that investing in Marrakesh is profitable for everybody, for the state and, the every, uh, and for the, the private people. But the other ones, we are still a greenfield destination. So what kind of investor we are looking for? It's more investor that they are, I mean, investor that they are looking for the 10% IRR. We don't find a lot of them. So we need to go through sovereign fund, to go through pension fund, to go through a, a specific kind of investor. For the others, they can go to Marrakesh. Private equity investor can go to Marrakesh, but they cannot go to a greenfield destination to okay. develop. I mean, it's not their role. Okay, thank you for that. Um, uh, Abdella Azoni, you've been sitting quietly waiting for your turn. Thank you so much for You're that. Saving the best for last. Saving, exactly. <laughs> so your Chief Hospitality Officer at MAD International. Tell us a little bit about what MAD International are up to. You know, what, what are your mega projects or your master plans? Right. I think I'm the odd one here because I represent the private sector. Um, Mahad is working to deliver what is the, uh, the, the, li the largest privately owned development in Saudi Arabia, precisely in Mecca. It's a cluster of 21 towers, uh, totaling about uh, 11,000 rooms, um, with the first phase coming in line um, hopefully towards the end of this year. Okay, and um, so because you're the, you represent all the private sector people in the room, it's your job to challenge these other people around the, the panel. But from, in, in terms of uh, your development in Mecca, it's a huge number of buildings, uh, and, and, and that's a very densely populated or, you know, um, investment area. How are you coordinating? How is that, in terms of the relationship between you and the authorities, the government, um, how is that coordinated? Do you get enough communication? Do they help you in attracting customers? Well, it's, it's too early to say because uh, we're in the development stage. Uh, but obviously, um, like you said, Mecca is, is a very complex market to be. It's uh, probably one of the dense, den, den, densest areas in, in, in the world, uh, both in terms of hotels, uh, in terms of the sheer numbers of people uh, in flux. Um, we, um, uh, like I said, we're preparing to deliver the first phase the, uh, the, the, the end of this year. And we're putting together uh, all the elements to make sure that it, that it succeeds. 
we, we do receive a lot of support from, uh, from, uh, from government entities, uh, which is uh, essential in order to make any uh, project of such a magnitude work. This, uh, this, uh, when we had our um, AHIC regional briefing in Jeddah recently, and we were talking about this, the thing that struck me about Mecca, you know, everyone's putting, not everyone, a lot of people are putting money into, into Mecca and Medina as well, and Jeddah also, but the land prices are incredibly high. And, it, I mean, how can you make a profit in, in that city? It must be incredibly difficult just buying the land and... Yeah, the, the, the correlation between the land prices and what you would actually generate in terms of IRRs is a, um, is, is a complex one. But uh, Mecca is probably the most resilient market in the world. Uh, no matter what happens uh, in the world, uh, that market will continue to work. And in fact, the more you build, the more will come. Um, and the government is working um, very hard to get the infrastructure ready. As you know, the airport is being made ready. Um, mm -hmm. Probably in one year's time it'll open and it'll be able to service more than 30 million um, passengers. Uh, there's also a road network uh, that they're working on, uh, the, the railroad, uh, Mecca Metro. So all the elements are being uh, put in place to, uh, to, to, to make sure that um, whatever investment is happening uh, makes financial sense. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, obviously, in terms of our investment uh, strategy, we, we're being very flex flexible. The, uh, the location of our project is, is very attractive, mm -hmm. and it uh, generated a lot of interest from uh, potential investors, so we, we, we're keeping our options uh, open. And um, uh, a piece of good news is, uh, uh, for those who don't know, the uh, Capital Markets Authority in Saudi Arabia uh, just recently, and in line with Vision 2030 and with the National Transformation Program, had put in place uh, rules and regulations to allow for REITs, that's a real estate investment trusts. And uh, the, the, the really good thing is uh, about three weeks ago, uh, the first REIT was launched uh, as an IPO. IPO and, uh, it was subscribed um, 120 times more than it's worth. And it, it's worth, I think, it was about 360 million. Uh, who, and who were the real. subscribers, locals or? All locals. Yeah. So it's, that's 120 times, not 120%. That's exactly 1,200%. Uh, and that shows you the extent of uh, the appetite that's in the market okay. and, and the fate that people put in, in Mecca as a... As I, I think, um, yeah, I mean, we saw with this, the big sovereign bond from Saudi Arabia last year, $17.5 billion, four times oversubscribed. So there's, there's loads of confidence in Saudi and in the Mecca market, and everyone, is, I think, understands the difficult, the transition it's going through. Right. Um, okay, that's great. Thank you very much. We'll come on to you. Um, Khaled, if I can come back to you about um, the financing. I think we've... We, We've touched on a little bit that public-private relationship. Maybe we can talk more. But um, Assas is, from what you've said, it's supported by um, uh, sovereign funds. Does that mean you don't need to go and raise financing? You've got no problem at all with uh, driving investment and raising capital? Well, not really. Um, our capital is 260 million USD, uh, basically. And that's what the shareholders agreed to put, uh, at least for the first three to five years. Uh, also, we are targeting minimum IRR of 10% as well. So we are profitable. Yes, we are managed by entities that are managed by government, but we must make money for these uh, funds. Uh, now, when we started with the big ambition, uh, we said that we will use our 260 million as a seed investment. Uh, we still in, in uh, Muscat, we are the second lowest uh, in terms of uh, number of hotel keys. Uh, in the GCC, uh, despite of the potential that many uh, people uh, are uh, confident on, on the local market of Muscat and Oman in general. Uh, as you may know that the best rev par performance for uh, last year 2016 in the region was Salala. Salala as well is, is growing. 
So uh, uh, I think we are also expecting the new terminal in, in Masqat, uh -huh. which is uh, as we have uh, uh, experienced in Sadada after we got the new terminal ready two years ago, uh, the growth was extraordinary. Uh, so basically we are, we are using our capital as a seed investment. We are building business cases where we put at least 30 to 40 percent and we bring other investors, whether from the local market or from overseas. Uh, we started some roadshow for some projects, and I think uh, uh, one of our the projects is Salam Air. We found Salam Air after we got the license, the private sector was interested to put money with us, despite of it is a budget airline. But uh, I think there is a belief on the, on the model that we are, we are doing. And and wh when you're looking to raise capital from investors, what are the main... What are the things that investors are looking at? Are they, the fact that it's government-backed, you know, that gives a tick of confidence, or is it the fact that it's the assets, you know, Salala or whatever th the project is, or do they look at things case by case and just judge? It's case project? by case, but I think uh, we, we go and we take that risk to build the business case to advanced stage. Mm. So investors, first of all, they will partner with a semi-government entity. We take the development role. We are also equity investor. As well, we got very good locations because we have a much better negotiation power with the government, okay. especially when we go for long-term lease or some partnership with government entities like the municipalities. So uh, 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 once we start on the construction, we invite other investors, so we don't like uh, go for uh, uh, you know very early stage. It's not a, a conventional or traditional investment banking approach. Uh, we are really working hand in hand. Plus, we complement it with the airline, and also we are looking to acquire a good share okay. uh, in travel agencies and tour operators down the road. Okay. So, if I, um, if, sorry to cut you off. We, we, it's fine. We, we're 14 seconds left, and I want to bring uh, uh, Abdullah back into it. To help. So I, we heard uh, Khaled mention Salala just now. Now, Russell, in the session we had yesterday on Russell Kaima, Salala came up as one of the competition markets. I don't know if that's correct or not, but. It, Competition must be a, that must be a big challenge for Russell Kema because you're sort of trying to break or or not break into but grow your position in a market that's uh, very competitive and also with a sort of fall in numbers. Yeah, uh, honestly, Richard, uh, I don't think that competition is really a negative thing. Okay. I mean, it's more of a competitive. It will allow us to create about different alternative options. How to create the destination. Because today, right now, I mean, the role of a master developer is not just only building a building. It's about creating a lifestyle. It's about creating an atmosphere. It's about building a sustainable community that allows people to walk, enjoy, whether they are resident or tourist, whether they are uh, at age of the, ch the kids or at the, their elder time. I mean, how to create a sustainable, a sustainable destination and this is where honestly this is the role exactly of the master developer right now okay. and being that in in Ras al Khaimah as the Al Marjan Island we are trying always to create the destination to create the atmosphere so the sustainable so uh, uh, Imad, I guess this is what you're talking about with the um, uh, uh, what was it predictive development or predictive yeah. cities yeah, that one was working on the same thing. We need to have a, uh, an attractive product. This is very important. I mean, you have to be on the, uh, on the same uh, trend. But, but what, when you say an attractive product, I mean, I mean that's important, but uh, obviously. Um, but who's responsible for that? Is it the Moroccan government to say we've got to make Morocco attractive, or is it the investor who's building a hotel to make their hotel yeah, attractive. Maybe we start by the developers, the master plan. I mean, we say that the state has to create this master plan, to work with the developer to create this master plan. It means that you have a unique product, a, a, a Moroccan product. We are not selling uh, a product different than what is in Morocco. People who are coming are, are coming to see Morocco, not uh, another country. So this is what we are trying to do. The, but this uh, uh, ecosystem uh, to be created uh, at different level because in the first stage you have the sovereign fund or the state who comes and bring the attractiveness the private comes later the private comes when it's a major destination it's a brownfield 
development and they come to put money to gain money. It is very important. Okay. Zoltan, final word. Yeah, just one, one idea to add here, and we, we see this in our, our two large master plan projects. The real challenge in, in, in master planning is to balance the, the urban development uh, thinking with the investor financing, equity raising uh, approach. Because and, and, these are essentially urban developments on steroids, on boosted urban schemes. And, yep. and, and, and how, what we often forget, I hope we don't, but some of us maybe do, is that we are creating the living spaces of the next generations of the next decades and then it's very easy to get carried away by, uh, by momentary availability of equity or debt or IRRs. Or, so it's, it's a very sensible balance and, and I think the role, the point role of the government, yeah. uh, I think yeah. that there, is a, there is a sensible role for, 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 the, for, the, for the public sector there as well because essentially at these scales that we are talking, five million uh, one million, six million uh, square meters of land. We're talking about the future of, of how these pl mm. places are going to look like. So, so it's a, and another thought which I just wanted to add to the um, uh, to, to the financing uh, idea is is I don't know how many investment bankers are in the room, but uh, or, or actually funds who would be interested in, in in coming to Oman. But but I I basically never met somebody from GCC not saying how amazing of a country it is and how huge of a tourism potential it has. Yet the the uh, the, the, the financial interest and and the focus uh, on on creating those products. We, I think we have two in, uh, real estate investment funds in the country, open-ended uh, uh, public uh, real estate investment funds, and and I think n now we will probably mature to the stage when when we will be able to, to talk about other ways of, uh, of, of raising um, uh, financing as well, mezzanine, preferred equity, and the legislation is gradually So you think in the, well. it, one of the trends over the next few years will be the sort of development of new financing models and uh, diversification? Okay, uh, thank you all five of you for, it's been a very short uh, and sweet panel, but thank you for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please thank your panelists for mega projects and master plans.